Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com and our study of the Tribulation Elect as we take a close look at Mark chapter 13 verses 20 through 23. Calvinists butcher the Bible, turning references to elect Israel into the church. And this has wreaked havoc on the body of Christ for centuries. And in this study of the Tribulation Elect, we will be rightly dividing the word of truth and bring clarity to this question as we now join our study in Mark chapter 13, beginning in verse 20. And the title of the message is The Tribulation Elect, and it's because it, uh, it directly relates to our Revelation studies, and I've had some questions about it, and this is going to clear up some of the questions, I hope and pray. You'll notice this uh, symbol right here. This is the Israeli flag. Now, what I'm about to say is going to sound like anti-Semitism. <laughs> That's a satanic symbol. Yeah. It's a hexagram. And it is used by the occult. Yeah. You have to understand that the, we support Israel. Amen. We support Israel's right to exist. Amen. But we also know the Bible says that the Israel that is here when Jesus returns is a, an Israel in unbelief. Whatever believers there are in Israel right now are going to be raptured out. So when the tribulation period starts, there are no believers in Israel. They're unbelieving Jews. And most of them are not only atheistic and agnostic, about 80 plus percent we've discussed before, but most of those are into the occult. They're into Kabbalah. You've heard about like Madonna and some of these, you know, getting into it, and I don't know how serious they are. But over in Israel, they are very heavily into Kabbalah and other occult New Age forms of spiritualism, not religion the way you and I understand it. And that symbol, a lot of these anti-Semite types like Stephen Anderson's, who's, who's well known on the internet, and all these like R.C. Sproul and these uh, reformed teachers that you hear of, uh, and, and the, uh, some of the cults, and all the, you know, the KKK groups, and the white, uh, what do they call uh, Christian identity, and most Calvinists, uh, they will point at that and say, that, see, that, that Israel's not of God. If Israel today, if that was of God, they'd be, they, they wouldn't be in unbelief, and they wouldn't have that symbol. That's the opposite of the truth. The truth is, God told us beforehand, what is in Israel when Jesus returns are a bunch of people mourning when He returns because they realize it was Jesus who was Messiah. All this time we've been wrong. So I just want to lay that out there when you start. The tribulation elect, is go we're going to see, is taken from among the unbelievers in Israel who are all left behind after the rapture. They will sign a covenant with death and with hell. Jesus said uh, they'll, they'll follow one who comes in his own name. So let's read the text. Mark 13, verses 20 through 23. Read it with me. And except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. Now every Calvinist reads that and says that's Christians. Every Calvinist is wrong. That doesn't have anything to do with Christians. Amen. It's talking about the people living through the tribulation. When it talks about those days, it's talking about the tribulation period. Amen. Verse 21, read it. And then if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is there, believe him not. Why? Because during the tribulation period, there's a false Christ. We know him in bi bi biblically, he's called the Antichrist. Yeah. And that's why he's saying, don't believe it. When Jesus returns, the rapture will take place in the sky. And if you're saved, you go up. When he returns at the end of the tribulation, he comes down. And if you are not one of his and you have the mark, you're destroyed. No one's going to have to tell you where Jesus is. Yeah. He's going to land on the Mount of Olives and the rest will be history. Verse 22, read it. For false Christ and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. This is during the tribulation period, but if you want to see what it's going to look like, just turn on TBN. You'll see all the false prophets, false teachers with their fake signs and wonders. These are going to be 
uh, it says they'll, they'll arise, it says they'll show signs and wonders. They're not fake. There'll be real signs and wonders they'll do, just like Janus and Jambres did in Egypt when Moses went in and threw his rod down and turned to a snake, and they threw a rod down and turned to a snake. But Moses' snake won. <laughs> Amen. Read verse 23. But take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. Unlike the blood moons, Jesus tells it before it happens. Amen? <laughs> now we pick up on the heels of this amazing statement that was made in verse 19. For in those days shall be affliction, such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time, neither shall be. Let that sink in. Everybody, I, There are people calling me, emailing me, telling me that I'm a false teacher because I don't understand that we're already in the tribulation period. I reply and say, you are insane. We ain't seen nothing yet. Amen. This is not great tribulation. You ain't going to last. <laughs> if you think this is great tribulation, I mean, they, you ain't seen nothing yet. And we establish that this is specifically toward the Jews in Judea the 144,000 in their converts. We studied this and we laid that out when we studied Mark 13. In verse 20, he says, Except the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom He hath chosen, He hath shortened the days. Now, we had already studied in the book of Revelation in, ver in chapter 7. God foretells of His intervention in order to save the utter destruction of these elect until it's time. There'll be a time when the 144,000 and their uh, converts will be killed and there will be a remnant left in Israel, but they're still unbelievers. And when Jesus returns, they look upon Him whom they pierced, they'll mourn. The tribulation election is described in Revelation 7. Go ahead and turn there if you have your Bibles open. We read about this and studied it before, but the tribulation election is different than election during this age. God has chosen to save those who believe the gospel. He has not chosen who will believe the gospel, which is Calvinism and is heresy. He has chosen to save those who believe the gospel. That's this dispensation. That dispensation, different. It's different. Revelation 7, beginning in verse 2 and verse 3, says, And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, this doesn't happen to you folks. It doesn't happen to Jehovah's Witnesses either, by the way. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And then verses 4 and 5, go ahead and read that with me. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and they were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed twelve thousand. Now, you can continue to go in through and you can circle each one of these tribes. You'll notice the tribe of Dan is missing. That's a very interesting study. We, did, we talked about it already in our study of Revelation 7, so we're not going to rehash that. Let's move on. 6 and 7, read it. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Naphtali were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Manasseh were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Issachar were sealed 12,000. People say, name the 12 tribes of Israel. You've got to ask them when. Yeah. You want me to name them at the time of the Exodus, or do you want me to name them during the tribulation period? Because they're different. There's a little nugget. Write that in the corner of your Bible. Continue to read verse 8. Of the tribe of Zebulun were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. Verse 9. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Verse 10, And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. There's your tribulation election right there. 
How many of those people believed on the death, burial, and resurrection and were born again? None of them. Anybody telling you it's the same? You want to follow that person? The blind will lead the blind into the ditch. You won't understand what you're reading. It's different. Yeah. It's just this. Now, this tribulation election consisting of the 144,000 and their converts which come from every nation and tribe and tongue reach heaven by martyrdom or enduring to the end. That's the only way to be saved in the tribulation period. I don't have to be martyred. I don't have to endure to the end. I'm saved right now. Amen. That wasn't true under Mosaic law. It's not true during the tribulation period. It's not, it wasn't true in the Garden of Eden. It's not going to be true during the millennium. You got something and you ought to be thankful you got it. Amen. This is quite the time to be alive. And uh, verses 11 and 12 says, And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen! Blessing and, on, uh, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. You know what's neat about that? It says, And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? Now watch this. This is how you're saved in the tribulation period. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. You don't do that. You receive the righteousness of Jesus Christ. You'll put on a white robe of righteousness when you reach heaven. That's different. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve Him day and night in His temple, and He that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more. Read that with me. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. You know what's saying that? They were on the earth when the sun novaed and scorched things. They suffered a lot of the things that the rest of the earth suffered. But they made it. And they're not going to have to worry about that anymore. Verse 17, read it. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Wonderful. No matter what you're going through, it does not compare to what you will experience in heaven. Amen. The church of Jesus Christ is in heaven observing these things. Amen. Everything you just read, you're already there you're already glorified. You've already been at the judgment seat of Christ. You've already received reward, or some have watched their reward, their reward go up in smoke, according to how you lived on earth. You already know what you are heading for in the millennium. You know where you're going to serve during that thousand year reign. And you are now watching everything unfold. I hath not seen, nor ear heard, nor the mind of man imagined. <laughs> Meditate on that a little while. <laughs> not only has the world not seen anything yet when it comes to tribulation, you and I ain't seen nothing yet as believers. Jesus has a lot in store for us. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in Me. In My Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto Myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Amen. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by Me. That's all, quote, unquote, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 But we must define the term elect. Just to be careful, we must define the term elect by the context. In verse 20 it says, And except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved, but for the elect's sake, whom He hath chosen, He hath shortened the days. We just saw Him choosing that elect for the tribulation period. We just saw who it was. It's not the church. Well, he's not talking to Gentiles. He's talking to Jews. Amen. 
it's, why is it so difficult then? <laughs> why do so many people have such problem with this? The tribulation elect saints are Israel, the 144,000 and proselytes. This is not the body of Christ any more than the elect are the body of Christ in the Old Testament. What do you mean? Go back and look. Israel as a nation is elect and some of them are in hell. Amen. Being elect is not directly related to salvation in the Old Testament. It's a nation and some of them are in hell right now. Jesus chose 12 apostles. One of them is in hell right now. I have chosen you 12 and one of you is a devil. These Calvinists, man, they'll make you blind. Calvinism is heresy and it'll make you blind. What most do not seem to notice is that from Genesis to Acts, every reference to the elect is either of Messiah or national Israel. Get that. Go run the references. From Genesis to the book of Acts, it's never about the church. Every reference to the elect is about Messiah and or national Israel. And you also see elect angels mentioned. Angels, not the church. Context, context, context. There are four, uh, these are uh, four, the four only biblical references to the elect in the Old Testament. We're going to run through real quick. There are only four. Isaiah 42.1 Behold my servant whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. You know it's blasphemy to claim that that's a church. That's talking about Jesus. Isaiah 45.4 For Jacob my servant's sake, and who? Israel. Mine Israel. elect. I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. The Calvinists will turn that into the church. Isaiah 65, 9. And I will bring forth a seed out of where? Jacob. Jacob. And out of who? Judah. Judah. An inheritor of my mountains. And mine elect shall inherit it. And my servants shall dwell there. Jacob, Judah, not the church. And Isaiah 65, 22. They shall not build and another inhabit it. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people. And mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. You know there are trees more than a thousand years old? As the days of a tree. <laughs> Israel. There are seven references to the elect in the Gospels and all are references to tribulation, saints, Israel, and proselytes. Mark 13, 21. That is why the focus of the context is on Judea, Israel, the Sabbath, and here in this text to the coming of the Christ in verse 21. Back in Mark 13, 21. And then if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is there, believe him not. Why? This is all about Jews in the tribulation period, in Judea, observing the Sabbath. Verse 22, the 144,000 will preach the coming of Christ and Satan will try to derail the faith of their converts with the false Christ. You see? That's what's going to happen. The 144,000 go out and preach. A bunch of people believe and so this false prophet arises doing authentic miracles. And I believe that Satan will be allowed to perform a resurrection when the Antichrist receives a deadly wound to the head. I don't think it's fake. Verse uh, 22, Mark 13, 22. Read that. For false Christs and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. Now look, not fake signs and wonders. Real signs and wonders. And the elect is Israel. Jews and proselytes during the tribulation period. Not the church. The ones in Petra? That'll be the last of them, yes. Actually, those will mostly be unbelievers. They'll be the ones who will look upon Him whom they pierced and they'll mourn. I mean, if you're a believer and Jesus comes back, you're, Jenny, do your little thing. Woohoo! <laughs> That's what you do. But if you're not a believer and Jesus comes back, you mourn. But the elect will heed God's Word and be kept from the great delusion to take place right there at the end when they go to Petra. 
In verse 33, he says, But take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. I just picture some Jewish rabbi with a King James Bible in his hand. I just, well, you can tell me I'm wrong in heaven, but I just expect it to turn out that way. And he's going to say, Wait a minute, wait a minute. I was reading here. Maybe you should sit down. Only those who are ignorant of Jesus' words are susceptible to Satan's lies. Wow. And that's why at the beginning of the tribulation, Israel buys the lie. And they make that covenant with the Antichrist. We've gone over this. You should memorize this verse. Hosea 4.6, read it with me. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Heavy stuff. You say, well, the priest, yeah, priest to the believers. All Christians are priests. Amen. Thank God for grace. Amen. Amen. But those of us who have believed the gospel have a much better future to look forward to. We're going to close with these verses. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. This is what we have in store. Read that with me. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Look, Calvinism says you were chosen by being uh, unconditionally elected. That's not what this says. This says you were chosen to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. He's chosen to save those who believe the truth. Amen. You believe the gospel, you're chosen. If not, you're not. Calvinism, bunk. <laughs> Verse 14, read it. Whereunto He called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's your future. Your future is the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is going to take these vile bodies and make it like unto His glorious body. We are going to not only be in the presence of glory, we are going to be clothed with glory. Everything in heaven, you and everything around you, is in a state of glory. None of us are going to be discussing comb-overs. None of us are going to be talking about the spare tire. Amen? None of us will be talking about oil of Olay and wrinkle cream. Those days are over, folks. Glory. Amen?
audio and video Bible teaching. That's bbfohio.com. On behalf of Bible Believers Fellowship, I'm Pastor Greg, and we thank you for listening.